and welcome back to uh, our study of Romeo and Juliet. We are going to read Act 1, Scene 5 today. This particular scene takes place in a hall in the Capulet's house. Romeo and his friends are on their way to a party there, even though they aren't invited. Conveniently, this party is a masquerade party, making it so that him and his friends can go incognito and not be recognized. Let's go ahead and listen to a little bit. Scene 5. A hall in Capulet's house. Musicians waiting. Enter servants. Where's Potpan? That he helps not to take away. He shift a trencher. He scrape a trencher. When good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands. And they unwashed too. Tis a foul thing. Away with the joint stools. Remove the court cupboard. Look to the plate. Good thou, save me a piece of march pain. And as thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell. Antony, in pot pan. Ay, boy, ready. You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for in the great chamber. We cannot be here and there too. Cheerily, boys, be brisk a while, and the longer live or take all. This is just an interaction between the first and second servant, and you see that these servants are getting ready for the party. Now, we have Capulet enter, and he's going to talk to his cousin here for a bit. Let's listen to some more. They retire behind. Enter Capulet and company, with the guests, the maskers. Welcome, gentlemen. Ladies that have their toes unplagued with corns will have a bout with you. Ah, my mistresses! Which of you all will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty? She elsewhere hath corns. Am I come near you now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a vizard, and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. Tis gone. Tis gone. Tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. The whole all give room, and foot it goes. Music plays, and they dance. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables up, and quench the fire. The room is grown too hot. Ah, Sarah, this unlooked-for sport comes well. Nay, sit, nay, sit, good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. How long is now since last yourself and I were in a mask? By your lady, thirty years. What, man? "'Tis not so much, tis not so much. "'Tis since the nuptial of Lucentio. "'Come Pentecost as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years, "'and then we masked. "'Tis more, tis more. "'His son is elder, sir. "'His son is thirty. "'Will you tell me that? "'His son was but a ward two years ago. "'What lady is that?' Which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady o'er her fellows shows. The measure done. I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? Forswear it, sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. All right, this is one of the difficulties in reading this play instead of watching it, because if we were watching it, we'd see a whole stage of people at this party. On one side, we might see Capulet and his cousin, and they're having the discussion about when was the last time they went to a party together. On the other side, you might see Romeo talking to the servant, and he is looking at a particular girl. Maybe she's off in the distance somewhere. Now, you can see he says, oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. That means she is so beautiful that she teaches fire to burn. Dang, this girl must be somebody to look at. And interestingly enough, we might assume that he's talking about Rosalind because for the first four scenes, all he's done is complain about how much he loves Rosalind. 
And then we go to here. It says, did my heart love till now for swear at sight? For I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. What? We have to ask ourselves. He was just professing his love for Jos or excuse me, Rosaline. And now he's already moved on and saying how he's never even seen true beauty. He obviously is kind of a flip flopper when it comes to love and companionship. Now we have Tybalt. And you're going to see that Tybalt, if you recall, he's the guy who likes to fight all the time. And he is a Capulet. And he's going to go talk to Capulet here in the other corner. Let's listen to what he has to say. This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What, dares the slave come hither, covered with an antic face, to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain, Romeo. Content thee, gentle cars, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and to say truth, Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which, if thou respect, show a fair presence, and put off these frowns, an ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits, when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. What, good man, boy? I say he shall. Go to. Am I the master here, or you? Go to. You'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You will set cock a hoop. You'll be the man. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. Is so indeed. This trick may chance to scathe you. I know what. You must contrary me. Marry, tis time. Well said, my hearts. You are a prinkox. Go. Be quiet, or... More light, more light. For shame, I'll make you quiet. What? Cheerily, my hearts. All right. We have... Um, Capulet and Tybalt talking, and Tybalt says, oh, I recognize this voice. This must be Romeo. And he says, it won't be a sin if I fight him. And what does Capulet say? He says, oh, you better not. I know Romeo to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. He says, for not all the wealth of all the town here in my house do him disparagement. So surprisingly, Lord Capulet is being really reasonable right now. He's saying, let him go. He's a good guy. Let's not start a fight. But Tybalt, knowing him and his um, kind of fighting ways, he wants to fight him. So let's hear what Tybalt has to say. And I want you guys to pay t special attention and look for the foreshadowing that is about to occur. Patience perforce with willful collar meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I will withdraw. But this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitter gall. Exit. To Juliet. Let's pause. So, we see this foreshadowing. He says, I will withdraw, but this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, turn to bitterest gall. Meaning that, you know, it seems harmless that Romeo showed up to this party and we're going to let it go, but this is not over. And knowing the ending of the story, we can presume that, indeed, this is not over. Tybalt is going to have some words with Romeo, and it's probably not going to be good. All right, here we have Romeo come up to Juliet. And so imagine now we're flashing to another side of the stage, or another set of characters comes up to the front. And here we have Romeo and Juliet speaking for the first time. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims ready stand, to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, 
And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saints lips and holy palmers too? Ay, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. And move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Kissing her. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips? O oh, trespass, sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. You kiss by the book. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. Okay, so immediately they see each other. Romeo spits some game at her, and then Juliet falls for it right away. They're kissing. And if you see, they keep talking about palmers, palm to palm, holy palmers kiss. What they're talking about here is um, an, a, a reference to the fact that people used to take pilgrimages back in the day. Pilgrimage would be like a, a travel to a holy site. And so Romeo and Juliet are kind of referencing all this like religious imagery when it comes to their first encounter and, and um, giving each other a kiss. And Juliet says, dang, you kiss by the book. Well, this means that Romeo is a good kisser. All right. Interrupting them is nurse. And she says, madam, your mother craves a word. And Juliet runs off here. And now Romeo is going to ask, what is her mother? What is her mother? Mary Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. And a good lady. And a wise and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. I tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. Away, be gone! The sport is at the best! Aye, so I fear. The more is my unrest. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet towards... Is Dean so? Why, then, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on, then. Let's to bed. Ah, Sarah. To second, Capulet. By my fay, it waxes late. I'll to my rest. Let's pause right quick. All right, so Romeo ends up asking Nurse, who is this? And, oh, my goodness, it's revealed. She is a Capulet. Oh, the one person he cannot fall in love with. And Benvolio says, let's go, let's go. Capulet ends the party. And then here we have Juliet talking with Nurse. Everybody else exits but those two. Exit. All but Juliet and Nurse. Come hither, Nurse. What is yond gentleman? The son and heir of old Tiberio. What's he that now is going out of door? Mary, that, I think, be young Petruchio. What's he that follows there, that would not dance? I know not. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo, and Montague, the only son of your great enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? A rhyme I learned even now, of one I danced with all. One calls within. Juliet. Anon, anon. Come, let's away. The strangers are all gone. Excellent. In. Let's pause right there. So, Juliet is playing really coy here. She's like, oh, hey, nurse, who's that guy over there? Pointing purposely at somebody other than Romeo. And she says, oh, that's Petruchio. And she says, oh, who's that guy over there? Again, purposely not pointing at Romeo. And she says, oh, uh, that is uh, an heir to old Tiberio. And then she says, who is that guy over there? Nurse doesn't know. And she goes and asks him. And it turns out, oh, no, it's Romeo and a Montague and the son of your great enemy. And Juliet, he, she says something really famous here. She says, my only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown, and known too late. 
meaning that she is already in love with him and she she saw him she didn't know who he was and it's too late she's in love with him if she would have waited perhaps she wouldn't have um fallen in love with him all right she moves on to say that she is going to leave and nurse calls her off the stage so um let's review some of the concepts that we talked about in this particular scene just so you guys can remember exactly what's going on so we have romeo and juliet again act one scene five let's talk about uh the beginning here lord capulet welcomes all to his party and romeo sees juliet across the room and falls in love with juliet he thinks rosalind who romeo says oh she does teach the torches to burn bright she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel on ethiop's ear she is so gorgeous he compares her to being able to uh to teach torches to actually burn fire because she's so beautiful he compares her to a precious jewel on the cheek of an ethiope would be somebody who is probably dark skinned from africa and so it would really contrast uh she would be like the rich jewel against the against the skin we have tybalt here and ooh, he is our hothead he overhears Romeo talking about Juliet and instantly wants to kill him. Tybalt says, Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither to come in spite, to scorn at our sol solemnity this night. Again, remember, this is foreshadowing. Tybalt's not the kind of guy to just let things go. Lord Capulet stops Tybalt from fighting in his house and warns him to calm down or leave the party. Lord Capulet reminds Tybalt that Romeo is behaving and that Romeo, you know what? He's received as being a good dude. And so let's just have a party and relax. And actually, this is surprisingly sensible of Lord Capulet because he doesn't want to start a fight. He just wants to let things go. All right. Um, we know that Romeo and Juliet instantly fall in love. And Romeo worships Julius with religious devotion. He references saints and prayers and their dialogue. As people are leaving, Nurse tells Romeo who Juliet is. She's a Capulet and his enemy. And he says, oh, she is a Capulet. Oh, dear account, my life is my foe's debt. Oh, no, they have fallen in love with each other, and this can't be good. All right, well, I hope this was helpful for you guys today, and I look forward to reading Act 2 with you. We know that we have our main characters established. We have Romeo and Juliet. We have Benvolio. We have Tybalt. We have Lord Capulet, Lady Capulet, and um, Nurse. These are our major players thus far. I hope that you guys have enjoyed reading Act 1, and I look forward to reading Act 2 with you. Talk to y'all later. Bye, and thank you.